Hello, I'm Matt Hoots with Rata Green. This video is part of a series. The rest of the videos with titles and links to the other videos are in the description below. So taking these principles, we started to come up with our own um, idea of what a perfect wall meant. Uh, this, this concept of a perfect wall, we've heard, we've heard it from um, the, what some people call him the father of building science, Joe Stebrick with Building Science Corporation. Uh, it wasn't his term. He uses it a lot. He, he teaches it a lot. He, he, but it has, has been around for a long time. And so what we're trying to do as, as designers, uh, which is what we do when we're, you know, as, as architects, we're designing these buildings, we're designing the building science as well. So it's not just the aesthetics of the home and the functionality and the, it's designing the assembly so that it works, so that it lasts. And, you know, just like we have to understand scale and proportion as an architect, when we're designing assemblies, we need to understand hydrothermics, thermodynamics, um, and these these principles are just as important. So this so I mentioned control layers, and in the upper left there, you see we have four primary control layers, and that's uh, water, and then uh, well, water, air, vapor, and heat. Those are the four main control layers and you put them and you see in this assembly everything is to the outside of the structure and this is our preferred way of, of designing and building because again you for continuity of our insulation um, you know there's there's absolutely in all the homes we I'm going to show you we have absolutely no in, insulation in the cavity except for one project and so everything is to the outside. It becomes, and we're finding now that the installation of exterior insulation is actually uh, less labor than trying to get the cavity insulation installed correctly. And if you know about in correct installation of, of bats, it takes a lot, a lot of work to get it right. You're cutting around wires and boxes and making sure that it's flush with the studs. You don't have depression and you don't, uh, you know, every time you depress the insulation or, I mean, compress it and you have more than a, you know, more than 5% compression, then you're starting to lose the R value. And in, there are published, there's published data showing how much the R value changes as you compress the insulation, you know, every, a certain amount. So, with it all to the exterior you don't have that you know you're not losing it's it's straight this is all rigid insulation that we're using here um and it and labor it's just like stacking bricks you know you're you've got either two by four four by four or four by eight sheets and they just stack up and it goes up so quickly sometimes and especially on the roof where you're just almost walking on a uh, and depending on the pitch, you know, you're just walking on a floor there and you just run it all, run it along, you don't, and it just becomes, uh, uh, anyway, so that's something we'll show, but that we're learning that install of exterior versus cavity is simpler uh, in our experience. So these are things we look at too, uh, your, when dealing with this exterior insulation, you see here is a comparison of uh, two layers of exterior versus everything in the cavity. And what we're looking at in this, on these diagrams, is what is our sheeting temperature? And sheeting temperature matters because if, if it is cold, if the sheeting is cold, it can, this is where the condensation can happen. And this is what we look at when we're looking at, I'll talk about this here, this is a hydrothermic analysis and it shows us where our risk level is for moisture. So when we get to this, when we have a sheeting temperature close to the inside, we're less, we're less at risk of having any uh, condensation buildup because we, we're not reaching dew point here. Whereas if we have a, a wall with cavity insulation, our temperature here, this is in Western North Carolina, showing a sheeting temperature of 18 degrees. And, it, and if it's, and if you 
have, if you reach dew point, you're going to have condensation on the sheeting. It depends on where, uh, it just depends in this cavity on uh, wh where that condensation happens as to how uh, damaging it can be. You know, your sheeting can, if it stays saturated for too long, it can start to corrode. Uh, so this this analysis here, this is uh, from one of the building, uh, one of our building science uh, friends here at uh, at Rockwell. Actually, he does these, uh, will do these for us. Uh, and so what it shows is this here, this green line is our threshold. We don't want our moisture risk to reach this uh, level. And so you see, these are the different assemblies that we had on a particular project, and we were just sampling each one. This uh, the the one that has the least risk, the further away from this green line, uh, that's that's the right balance of insulation on the exterior. Uh, nothing, and these same thing here. This is we were just looking at different options for uh, the amount of insulation. So this is the exterior ex exterior side of the sheeting layer, uh, what the RH is, and that's that's this spot right here. And then the the water content in the sheeting layer, the moisture percentage that's what this is here and it's showing us that we're well below our threshold so this is our risk line and we want to stay and, and this by the way is you can see this is over an entire uh, from 2016 to 2019 showing uh, worst case scenario um, for for three years so each one of these peaks is a bit you know it's the same time of year here so this is just showing the worst case scenario on the home on, on it, in a certain assembly uh, and showing that we are well within our uh, well below our risk level so this this um, perfect wall as I mentioned it can be done anywhere in the world this is these projects we've done the, and it, and what changes is mostly what changes is the amount of insulation everything else stays the same. We put all of our air uh, and vapor control layers right on the exterior side of the sheeting. I can go back to this right here. This is where our air and vapor control layers are. And then we put our thermal control layer out here. And then our bulk water control layer is the cladding. And so we want to make sure that is solid uh, and, and robust so we don't get any bulk water into this assembly. But as I said, especially with the right insulation, with a drained, vented, and vented cavity, which is a rain screen, we can allow water to get in there because it dries. So this is what this is the idea of a perfect wall, and this is what we have designed as our perfect wall that continues to work today. So again, anywhere in the world, this assembly, the control layers to the exterior, the way we've got it, can work anywhere. Thanks for watching this video. For your convenience, we've loaded up the next video as part of this series. If you enjoyed this video, give Chris and Dan a thumbs up.